The quiz slash game show is a staple of British TV, ranging from highbrow question-based shows to luck-based to physicality-based and varying in tone, budget, length of time on air, and of course, quality. Life without them would leave a large gaping hole in the schedules of many a broadcast network. These types of shows are so common in fact, that if you live in the UK, you have a one in five chance of hosting one. Based on the sheer quantity of these types of shows, there's bound to be stinkers out there. And one of the biggest examples of this is the 2011 show, Don't Scare the Hair. Don't Scare the Hair was a short-lived game show that was aired for just eight episodes and pasted just before the BBC's popular sci-fi show, Doctor Who, to gain some kind of traction. So what on earth was this show? The premise of Don't Scare the Hair is that presenter Jason Bradbury and his only friend, a four foot tall animatronic bunny, live in a secluded, plastic looking forest. Hi, I'm Jason and I live in an underground forest with a hare. Now and again, I invite some visitors to pop down to our little world and do some really odd jobs. Simple. Two teams of contestants are brought on to participate in seemingly random challenges, thinly veiled via a plot linking it all together to the hare character, who all the while contemplates how he's going to kill the live studio audience. <laughs> The first five minutes of each half hour show was spent introducing and then taking the piss out of the contestants, usually involving some YouTube level editing. Mark, you're a stay at home dad with yep. six children to look yes. at. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I didn't even need to edit that. The show is doing the job for me, even if it's doing the worst possible job. Though. Both teams proceed to take on three tasks which range in stupidness but include throwing apples at shit jumping around in a sleeping bag, testing a terrible prototype for a hot air balloon, stealing giant eggs, and whatever the fuck this is. That is a tight squeeze. Madness, this pure madness. Whether a contestant passes or fails is normally based on time, getting one thing to another side of an obstacle course, or whatever the producer could think of that morning. The two teams get free goes at every challenge, which in turn means every game is an absolute slog to get through. And rather than being simple and awarding points for completing the task and how well, they have to add even more lore to the show by giving them plastic carrots, which just equate to points anyway. Annoyingly, they couldn't even get the point system right. You'd think, free goes, if you lose a go, you lose a point, right? Nope. If you get it in the last go, or if you get it first time, you get three points either way, or you get nothing if you lose every time. This is still the third game in the show, where it's abandoned entirely, and you're collecting mass carrots, which means the first two games were a complete waste of time, and one team normally gets 92 points, and the other, five. Now, some of these games are reused over the eight episodes because the showrunners realized they were that good and not because they had already spent their budget on the creepiest rabbit since Donnie Darko. Why are you wearing that stupid bunny suit? As I mentioned earlier, Jason Bradbury is the host here. He's most known for presenting The Gadget Show and brings a nerdy, cheesy vibe with him. He's trying his best to have banter with the contestants, but he has nothing to work with. We tend to get together on a night on um, computer games. I love it. I want to come to your house. He's no Brad Walsh. Hey. Jason is present throughout the games, but strangely, he's often muted and replaced instead by Sue Perkins doing commentary in a desperate attempt to make the game seem fun. Her other job is to keep reminding you what is happening as the games are that inapplicable to the average person. Her comments often have no relation to what's happening and range from cringy to downright creepy. It's your rod out here, we're going fishing. Yeah, your sister's screaming as well, come on. I know, a lovely role. Oh, I do hope you got permission from that chicken to take its eggs that way. Can I call you, Damo? Can I? Is it over familiar? Oh, it's like laser quest down there. I can't really blame her as no one would have a chance at explaining this. Clearly, they were trying to replicate what Total Wipeout and other shows had been doing for years. Now to Granny's house. Oh, watch them. Oh! <laughs> oh, she did it! After the free games, 
one team is sacrificed to the hare, while the show suddenly thinks it's a quiz show and asks the team questions ranging in difficulty and normally based on things that had just happened. Once again, you are allowed three mistakes, and if you get three questions right, you win £15,000, which is hardly deal or no deal, or who wants to be a millionaire money, but for these shows, you need a lot of luck, or some degree of intelligence. Even shows like Pointless, which is not the easiest to win, oftentimes only award one to two grand, and The Chase, under ten grand. But I suppose those shows had to save their budgets past eight episodes and didn't spend most of that money on something from the shittiest Watership Down reboot. The biggest question I have is why? Why build a show around such a stupid premise? The easiest answer would be is that somewhere in the back of the BBC's storage warehouse, an unlucky employee found this animatronic rabbit built by some insane scientist who may have also been a Blue PO presenter and decided to pitch its use to a producer who then had 10 minutes to cobble together some sets using whatever else was not being used by Doctor Who, Casualty, Strictly Come Dancing, Antiques Roadshow, The News at 10, EastEnders, and Dick and Dom in the Bungalow, all held together by duct tape and spit. This isn't the case. This monstrosity, all these sets, and all the thinly stitched together plot linking the premise of the show to anything resembling coherent TV was all commissioned and paid for by taxpayer money based off of Brian from Level 2 Accountant's Mushroom Trip. Game shows that require any sort of physical level of engagement normally succeed in two areas. The first is when the show actually has some kind of challenge and its contestants inspire the audience to A, believe they could do better at said show than the contestants taking part, or are impressed by said contestants. Shows like Ninja Warrior, for example. The other way these shows go is that the contestants are constantly ridiculed by the host and the show's editing staff to hopefully make them look a twat. These two things are not mutually exclusive and a show could have both. Don't Scare the Hair is nowhere near either of these as no one gives a shit how far another human can carry a giant egg with an equally large foam spoon. Don't Scare the Hair's legacy is that of merely a fever dream in the minds of a few unfortunate souls who vaguely remember Bugs Bunny's bored cousin and to be listed in the worst TV shows of all time every few years. It likely still haunts the audience members who are forced to chant every few minutes like part of the world's least threatening cult. Yeah!